Alright, hi there YouTube. Um, this is Cloud9, and I'm going to be doing the first couple of missions on HackTheSite.org, and they're the basic missions. Um, we'll divulge into the realistic missions and other ones, including JavaScript, logical missions, stuff like that. But for now, let's get started with the basis of a lot of things. So there's a lot to security, and what these first 11 missions do is actually teach you um, quite, a, quite a few useful things. Um, it takes a lot of research on your own time and your own part, really, to understand something fully. But here, I can at least give you a kind of a helping hand at getting started with learning some of the concepts and some of the uh, methods and techniques used when you're penetration testing. Okay, so we're here on this first mission. Alright, so this is the very first basic mission. Alright, so it says this level is what we call the idiot test. If you can't complete it, <laughs> don't give up on learning it all you can, but don't go begging someone else for the answer. That's one way to get you hated, made fun of, enter the password, and you can continue. Okay, so when you're penetration testing or you're looking for vulnerabilities in a... You motherfucker. When you're looking for vulnerabilities in a, web, in a website, what you're doing is you're really focusing on the back end of things, okay? Everything on this page that is visual is run by some sort of code, okay? So the first place you always want to look is in your source code for information that can help you attain an answer as to how you can exploit something or part of the website. Um, this would go for like anything, you know, computer systems, cell phones even. So basically they said this is the idiot test. Well, obviously the answer is going to be pretty easy to find if it's the idiot test. I mean, it must be really hard for you not to be able to find it. So, oh, look, right there in the source code. Okay, so this was obviously relatively easy. This is simple. And you could have even said control of password and it would have given all you or given it to you, you know, pretty much instantly. So what we need to focus on now is mission two. Because mission one was easy. Okay, so we're gonna head to mission two. Okay, one second. Okay, so this is mission two. All right, so let me zoom in for you. Network security Sam set up a password and injection script, or I'm sorry, pr protection script. He made it. Uh, he made it load the real password from an unencrypted text file and compare it to the password the user enters. However, he neglected to upload the password file. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to explain to you real quick how authentication systems work, okay? I'm not going to go in depth real hardcore, I'm just going to explain, you know, just so you have a gist of, like, understanding of what exactly happens. So let's imagine this is a block of code, and this is how it authenticates, okay? So what happens is, um, you here, let's say this is your little computer, sends information to be authenticated, okay? That would be your po password box or your form box, okay? So what happens is you click, you know, uh, whatever, submit. Okay, it sends the information f from your computer right here to this, okay? Now, the code has probably a database or something that it has to sift through, a giant text file perhaps, or even just a set password in the script. When you enter the password, the script says, okay, okay? That's only if the information given to the script is matching or correct, okay? So that's how, you know, authentication systems work. That's, you know, the most basic rudimentary thing I can show you. Now, when the script has nothing compare, nothing to compare the script to, then there is no password. It cannot authenticate anything. It could, in a basic sense, you could program a file to say if there is nothing to compare to, then, you know, deny false anyway. But that's not what happened. Security Sam's an idiot. So he literally just said... Uh, fuck it, I forgot to upload the file. So, basically what this is is a free pass for you. There is no password for the script to um, compare to. There is no, um, like, fail system set up in the script so that if in the event that that happens, you know, it won't deny it. So this is just a basic script that compares, you know, an input to an input. So, basically, all you gotta do is click Submit. Okay. Let me see how much time I have left on this. We're good. Alright. So let's go back to our basic missions, and number three. This one is also pretty easy. And also read these down here, because they uh, actually tell you what you need to know so ahead of time. Alright. 
So, um, some intuition is needed to find the location of the hidden password file. Requirements, basic HTML knowledge. Well, we all should have that if we're starting to do this. Alright, so, this time Network Security Sam remembered to upload the password file, but there were deeper problems than that. Okay, well, what's the first thing we do? We already know that we just need a basic understanding of, you know, HTML. No JavaScript, we don't need any of that. So, let's head to the source code. Alright, what we're really going to be focusing on when we do these missions is this right here, this little area, you know, most of the time. So you want to scroll down to that area in the code where it would be located. Here it is, right here, that's our form. Okay. So, what's happening here? Okay, well, let me explain to you how form actions work in HTML. You have your form action, okay? Now, your forms are these little boxes right here, and these little submit buttons. That's your form, okay? This is the input and this is the actual form that submits the um, code. Okay, so what happens here is it goes form action, missions, blah, 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 blah. What it's doing is it's sending the input which is in that box to the PHP file, which would be the password. And like I said in the other one, that's how authentication systems work. It forwards information to it, it tries to find a match. If it finds a match, then, you know, you're good, you're authenticated. If not, then it denies you or just, you know, doesn't at all. So, basically what's going on here is it's actually telling you where the password.php file is. So what's happening is it's comparing these two things together. Okay? So in a sense what he just did is actually gave you the location of the password file. So if you come back to this and put that on the extension, there's your password. Now if you understand how that works or what just happened, basically what he did was in this value right here, okay, that should not be accessible to open eyes, okay? When you are locking down um, a file system on like Apache or something, you should always chmod and ht access your files and your directories. What he didn't do was come in here and ht access the uh, directory. So all files, if they're, um, if you know where the file is, it's readily accessible, but you should always chmod and HD access the files so that no one can have access to them other than, you know, the server itself, you know, only, only, you know, root side should have access to that particular file. So that's really it. Um, I'm going to be continuing this in a different video because I don't want to run out of time. Yeah, I've got seven minutes on here. So, um, hopefully this was like helpful to people that are just starting out. If you have any questions, please comment on my page.